Do you want to make some money? Well, if your answer is yes, then you've come to the right place because I know a thing or two. I'm going to show you in this video how you can make some US dollars from Jamaica in your sleep. What is up guys? My name is Chris Weller and welcome to my first video. If it's your first time here, That was such a dumb thing to say. Did you catch that though? I mean, obviously it's your first time here. It's my first video. But you know, I'm not gonna stop, so I'm not even gonna cut it, so we're moving on. What I'm trying to say is like, subscribe, share. Um, I plan to make videos about investing, politics, economics, and I might talk about philosophy. I know that kind of sounds boring, but it really isn't. I see a bunch of people with a ton load of questions about the world, trying to understand what's going on. Well, these fields can help us understand what's going on. So, so stay tuned. Tell me what you think at the end of the video in the comment section, okay? All right, making money. Somewhat easy, somewhat hard, right? Depending on who you ask, really. But one thing's for certain, making money has become much more difficult right now for some people. You know, pandemic and everything. I mean, if you look, governments of the world, they're trying to lock down their countries, trying to contain COVID. And if anything, this pandemic is really teaching us that we can't depend on one source of income. We have to diversify, which means we have to find a way to earn passive income. Now, I know a lot of people have different views on how to earn passive income. I mean, <laughs> whenever I hear Jamaicans talk about earning passive income, they usually mean collecting rent or taxi business and don't get me wrong those are great ideas i mean if you can make that work for you then by all means go ahead but for most of us you know average people ghetto youths like myself we don't own anything and we we can't afford to put anything on the road as taxes we're broke so we have to start small baby steps and uh, the stock market essentially makes that possible because we don't need a ton load of money to invest in the stock market. We can start small, build a new passive income stream by investing in stocks. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're not going to be poor forever. Hopefully, sometime in the future, we can have enough money invested so that we can stop doing what we have to do right now to make a few pennies. Let's be honest here. The salaries in Jamaica are rough. Um, and we can focus on what we want to do in the future when we have enough money. Now, let me give you some pointers, some tips, a bit of advice. When it comes to investing, you don't want to invest in just any company. You want to invest in strong companies, companies that are strong and large enough to pay dividends today, today, right? In other words, you want to focus on dividend paying stocks. Just, just stay away from companies that don't pay dividends. And here's why, because I know that by saying that I'm already upsetting some people. When you look at the U S stock market, you'll find that most of all the returns have come from dividends, not stock appreciation, which by the way, is the other way you can make money from stocks. Check it and you find out. Don't quote me, but <laughs> I think the figure is like from 1940. 60% of all the returns have come from dividends. So I, I really should have the updated stats in front of me to show you, but I, I think my memory is good. Um, you get the point though. Dividends are important. And so when I started to do some research, I found out one interesting fact that changed my investment philosophy forever. Over the last 40 years, 51 or sorry, over the last 40 years, 71% of the market's returns came from dividends, not capital appreciation. So rule one for me is I'll never own a stock that doesn't pay a dividend, ever. I'm wondering whether I should give you a definition of a stock and tell you what dividends are. Hmm. All right, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> um, so a stock is essentially a financial asset that represents ownership in a business. Not to get too technical here, but when you buy a stock, you essentially become part owner of a business, right? And you're entitled to some of the profits because of that. Also, if the company declares it, you get those profits in the form of dividends. Okay. 
All right, great. Now I know that we're on the same page. If you've made it this far in the video, you probably realize that I'm only talking about the US stock market. I haven't said a thing about the Jamaican stock market. I really hope you picked up on that because if you didn't, it means that you're just skipping through not paying attention. And for the record, I just want to let you know that that hurts my feelings because for you to just skip through, not pay attention, I put a lot of work into these videos, okay? So if that's what you're doing, you should feel guilty. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not against investing in the Jamaican stock market. I actually think there's some really good returns you can make in Jamaica, but I kind of look at the world similar to how a rich guy would. And what I've realized is that rich people don't keep all their money in one country. They're usually invested in different companies in a bunch of different countries, earning money from all over the world. In other words, they're always searching for high returns wherever they may be. Uh, replicating that as an individual, you know, as an average person is going to be difficult, very difficult actually. But this is the first step. Remember, we want to be one of those rich guys, you know. So we have to start the process. And we're going to start with America. America is going to be the first country that we're going to look for companies to invest in. Uh, buying shares in American companies is not impossible. All you need is a stock brokerage company. You don't even necessarily need an American stock brokerage company to buy US shares because we have Jamaican ones out here. There are Jamaican stock brokerage companies that allow you to buy US shares. But I strongly suggest that you use the American ones because the Jamaican ones are just not very good. And before some people come at me with this nationalistic crap, I don't hate Jamaican companies. It's just that in this particular instance, they're not very good. I could give you the reasons as to why I don't use the Jamaican stock brokerage companies, but I don't want to make this video superfluously long. So I'm just going to tell you the company I use, show you how to open an account so that you can start earning passive income from American companies. All right. So the company I use is TD Ameritrade. What I really like about TD Ameritrade is that they don't require a lot of documents from you to open an account. Like <laughs> we know in Jamaica, it's not just brokerage firms though, banks and other financial institutions. Whenever you want to open anything, they always require a ton load of documents from you. TD Ameritrade, no, that's not the case. You don't need a ton load of documents to open an account. You don't pay any commissions either, which is a really good thing because you don't want to have to constantly spend money to buy and sell US stocks. You want to save on that, right? So that you can use that to reinvest and increase your profits even further. Another thing I really like about TD Ameritrade is that you can open an account online because in Jamaica, sometimes out here they tell you that you can open accounts online, but usually you still have to come in. This now, you don't have to come in. It's not as though you have to fly to America to open a TD Ameritrade account. No, you'll be able to open one even if you're far away in Jamaica or any other country. Maybe you're watching this from Trinidad. You'll be able to open an account even if you're from Trinidad. Also, they don't have any minimum balances. That's huge because sometimes some of these companies out here, like for instance, Alliance Investment, it allows you to buy and sell US stocks, but you need at least 1000 US dollars to open an account. TD Ameritrade now, you don't need a certain amount of money before you can open an account. You can just open it. Um, anyways, I'm now just going to show you how you can open an account online. All right, so now that we've switched over, let's start the process. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna search for TD Ameritrade. And then you're gonna visit the website. Once you're on the website, you can, you know, familiarize yourself with the website. To open the account, we're gonna look for open new account. You can find it at the top right hand corner, or if you scroll down, you'll find it as well. I'm going to select the one at the top right hand corner. This now is where you select the type of account that you want to open on the left side. 
it shows you the different types of accounts available on the right side this information is explaining what applies to all accounts i remember telling you guys that td ameritrade doesn't charge you commissions to buy and sell stocks well if you read right here you'll see that i was telling the truth if you're not sure which account to open you can click not sure find an account and once you answer these questions it'll suggest an account type that's best suited for you but i'm not going to go through that because i think most people are only interested in opening an individual account so let's just select this this is the part where you're asked to provide some basic information i'm going to go ahead and put some fake information and show you so that when you progress there are no surprises I've put in some fake information. This is how it looks. Once you've put in your real information, just move on to the next page. This page is asking you for some more basic information, your birthday, your citizenship, your TRN number, because you're Jamaican, of course. And if you scroll down, it's just asking you for some more employment information. For this, how do you plan to use your account? I remember telling you guys that if you're into Forex, you can buy and sell currencies using TD Ameritrade. So if you're into that, you'd select advanced trading. But for this video, I'm going to stick to the simple asset classes, stocks, bonds, options. Let me just put some information in, show you how it looks so that we can move on. As you can see right here, it's asking you whether you have a US visa. Personally, I don't know any Jamaican without a US visa nowadays, but I'm going to put no because I'm assuming, you know, get a youth. I know this is long, but it's just asking for some employment information. For employment status, just select the one that best describes your employment situation. This is how it looks. Once you're finished with that, all you'd have to do is just continue to financial information. On this page, you're being asked to provide some more basic information about yourself. These questions are related to your financial situation. They want to know your annual income, your net worth, how you're going to fund this account, things like that. Very easy stuff. Um, by the way, if you're wondering why, you have to divulge this kind of information it's really to protect against fraud so in america the sec which is the securities and exchange commission it requires broker dealers to collect this kind of information and it's all to protect against money laundering you can actually read up on the sec it regulates the securities market in america this is really why brokers have to have good record keeping. I've left a link to the SEC's website that explains all of this. So ensure that you read it. It's in the description. As usual, I'm just going to enter some fake information so that we can continue. Now 
Now, you're asked to answer these two questions on the affiliations to find out whether you might have any access to insider information. To properly explain what insider information or insider trading is in detail would require another video, but essentially, insider trading is when you make a trade based on information that's not publicly available. So, imagine a situation in which your friend who works in some top position at Walmart tells you that the company is not doing well this year and you decide to sell Walmart stock based on that information which wasn't yet available to the public. Well, that's insider trading and that's illegal. So this is why TD Ameritrade is asking you whether you have any family members who works in some top position at one of these publicly traded companies. Um, just answer the questions honestly and move on when you're done. I'm going to select no for each. Now this last question, the sweep of uninvested cash, all this is asking you is where do you want your money to be held when it's not invested? By that it means the non-invested cash that you might have in your account. So when you deposit money to, into your TD Ameritrade account, suppose that you transfer 500 US dollars and you spend half of that to buy some stocks, you're going to have 250 US dollars laying around, laying around not doing anything. What TD Ameritrade is asking you is, where do you want that 250 US dollars to be held? In one of its banks, just TD banks, or should it be held in the brokerage account? The one you choose really depends on how much money you have because these are insurance schemes. The FDIC insurance is for banks and the SIPC insurance is for brokerage accounts. Depending on the one you choose, one of them will protect you from losing up to a certain amount if one of TD's um, TD Ameritrade affiliate banks fails or if the brokerage firm itself fails. The first option, the one that you see right here, FDIC, the FDIC option. This one is saying that if you choose for your money to be held in the, in the bank, the FDIC, which is a US government agency by the way, it will provide deposit insurance up to 250,000 US dollars if one of the affiliate banks fails. But because I know you can see the $500,000 right here, let me explain that quickly. So because TD Ameritrade customers can use up to two program banks, it means that they can actually increase the FDIC's usual protection of 250,000 to 500,000 US dollars. The other option, the SIPC option, if you choose this, you're telling TD Ameritrade that you want the uninvested cash to stay in your brokerage account. Once you select this, the SIPC insurance would apply and the SIPC insurance limit for cash is 250,000 US dollars, right? Um, I don't think any of my viewers is going to be torn by which to select. None of you guys has anything close to 500,000 US dollars. So, well, then again, if you plan to invest for the long term, which you should be doing, you're going to have more than that at some point. So it's important to know what to do from now. I'm going to leave links to the SIPC and the FDIC in the description below so that you guys can familiarize yourselves with the two institutions. I selected the FDIC option. So let's just move on. Now this page shows your review of all the information. This is where you're going to review all the information that you just entered. Double check to ensure that everything is correct because if it's not correct, you're going to have to do it all over again. After you've done that, just go to the next section. When you get to this section, you're basically done. Ensure that you read the client agreement. After you've done that, click this and move on guys. Once you get to this page, you're done. You're finished. Write down your account number because you're going to need that. Download the new account cover sheet because 
you're gonna have to submit that to them along with a copy of your current passport and a bank statement that shows your name and address also where you see it says the irs form the w8 ben we need to complete this form because we're not americans we're foreigners we're jamaicans and don't feel as though just because you're investing in american companies that you're gonna avoid paying taxes because you're not gonna avoid them foreigners are usually subjected to a 30 percent tax on the income that they receive from us payers so if you're a foreigner and you're getting you're getting um interest rent premiums or dividends that's the tax rate that you're subjected to but listen you're not gonna pay that sounds like some illegal stuff right now right here's the thing there's an exception for countries that have tax treaties with america those countries get to pay lower tax rates and let me just tell you from now jamaica does have a tax treaty with america so jamaicans are only required to pay 15 percent on dividends let me pull up that tax form and complete it now just put in your information and you should be good um at number five when he's asking you for your ssn you're gonna put not applicable right here you're gonna put your trn number at number six foreign tax id put your td ameritrade number account number at number seven look the the tax form is very easy to fill out so i won't be going through everything on it the only part that might give you a slight headache is number nine and ten really number ten um, for number nine you're gonna put jamaica obviously right put jamaica right there for special rates now okay this is really really easy really easy to understand and i've already explained it to you remember when i told you that because of the tax treaty between jamaica and america jamaicans only pay 15 percent on 15 percent on dividends all this is asking you is Get the article number from the tax treaty and put it here, right? To do that, you just need to go to the IRS's website. So you type in IRS website tax treaties Jamaica, right? You go here. You're going to search for dividends. Dividends. Look for the article number. All right, article 10. Right, it's in section 2B, 15% of the gross amount of dividends in other cases. That's what you're going to that's what you're going to take and you're going to put it in this. So right here it says beneficial owner is claiming the provisions of article and paragraph 10. Let me just check again. Yeah, paragraph two. It's a 15% tax, remember? See, you see 15% right here. And for right here now, you're gonna write beneficial owner. is a resident of Jamaica meeting the terms of the treaty under article or resident. Oh, didn't you see what I did? I made a mistake. Actually, this should be underneath because it says of withholding on specific. This should be dividends. I'm sorry. I should put on my glasses. That's where you're going to put it. Once you've put that in, you're just going to sign. Ensure that you sign it physically. No electronic signatures. But the date and you're done just like that. It's very, very simple.
Now, to get your account opened, you just need to submit those documents to TD Ameritrade. Your application form, the tax form, um, a copy of your passport, and a bank statement showing your name and address. The problem is though, you can't just send these documents via email. TD Ameritrade won't accept your stuff like that. Instead, they have a special website where you can send your documents. Where you're gonna go, you're gonna go to um, move it. There it is. Move it.tdameritrade.com. Click register and send files. You're gonna have to create an account to do it and you should be good. The recipient email is new at TD Ameritrade. Um, look, this is also something very easy to do, so I won't go through this in detail. Once you have submitted everything, wait around five business days for them to process it. If you submitted any wrong information, you're going to have to wait longer and you're probably going to have to do it all over again. So double check before you send it off because I wouldn't want to do this all over again double check guys and you're gonna have your account in five business days that's it for my first video i really appreciate your time before you go don't forget join the notification squad like the video share it with your friends um i have a goal of getting to at least 1000 subscribers by the end of december so help me attain that goal because this is the only thing i have going for me the only thing yeah I want your pity.